A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit, and every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This powerful image of Jesus as the vine, us as the branches, is very helpful to me in my day-to-day -day life as a Christian, and I wonder if it works that way for you as well. I'm struck by the final, the final phrase of this section of John's Gospel where Jesus says, My Father is glorified by this, that you abide in me, that you bear much fruit, and that you become my disciples. I had just a small little experience um, in Ottawa as I was there for the Dean's Conference this past week, and it strikes me that it's a good example of how in small ways when we abide in God, when we abide in Christ, when we are shaped by God's word in us and our, and our participation in God's love through community, how it shapes us to indeed glorify God and give testimony to God. And it's a very simple, short story. As I was checking out of my hotel in Ottawa after the end of the conference, there had been a hiccup somewhere and midway through my four day stay, I had, um, I received an email saying, you have been checked out, thank you for your stay at the Ottawa Inn. And I went downstairs and had them correct it and there was confusion and, um, it just I won't bore you with it. But uh, as I was actually checking out on the final day, I said, now I would like to speak to someone at the front desk. I said, I'd like to speak to someone who can assure me that I will only be charged for the days I was here and not for that plus two more. And uh, in my in the midst of trying to just sort out an everyday thing, um, there was a little tension, there was pushback. And I just said, I just need you to know, here's what I need. I was just, you know, being calm and kind. Then the woman who had helped me, the manager, came over and she, I'd given her my card. She said, oh, you're a reverend. And I said, yes. And she said, uh, you, I just, there was something about you and about this whole exchange. I just thought there's something different here. She said it was just so interesting and you had a certain aura and a certain energy about you and now I understand. And I thought, isn't that wonderful. I mean, that, that, that's the story. There's nothing more or less than that. But simply that by being in the world uh, shaped by what I know about forgiveness, about seeing the humanity of other people, about, about um, respecting the dignity of other human beings, including people who are trying to sort out, you know, snafus with computers, um, that continuing just the commitment, the radical commitment to see the humanity in another person, actually to see God in another person and to um, already be side by side with them when I approach to resolve a conflict, that that struck this manager as so different that it was noteworthy and she needed to come over and tell me that she was moved by that. I was then able to say to her, you know, Christ Church um, Cathedral Ottawa is just two blocks from here and I would really recommend that you go to them if you ever need any help and um, kind of interacting with your near neighbors because they're in a downtown setting just as we are at St. James. And it just wound up being a very grace-filled conversation with her, but it began with her finding it extraordinary that I treated her the way that any Christian would treat another person. And she was able to connect that to my Christian identity and um, and remarked on that and wanted to dwell in it, in fact, uh, for a few moments with me. 
And so, of course, can we be good and kind to people? Can you just be a good humanitarian and accomplish that same thing? Yes, you can. But the way that I have come to that way of being in the world, my radical commitment to seeing the the full dignity of the the person in front of me, the human being in front of me, I have arrived at that way of being in the world by abiding in God, by abiding in Christ, by, by God's word abiding in me, by my, the formation that I have with my communities of faith over the years, which have continued to drum into me those basic principles of human dignity and love of God and loving one another as our, as our default and as our set point in this world. So as we dwell on this image of Christ with Jesus telling us that he is the vine and that God is the vine grower and that you and I are the branches, may we find ways in our life, in our day-to-day -day life, quiet little ways like my encounter with this manager to let our dwelling and abiding in God be a fruit in this world and to be a visible sign of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ and indeed to glorify God by the fruitfulness that you and I bear into this world. May God be with you this day. May God bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.